Well, now, and you can see in the upper corner, it says in faint, faint font, limitations of the basic RNN. So let's see what they are. And we've actually discussed some of them previously. So just a quick recap with RNNs. There is the folded compact version, which is what you see here, the input, output, hidden state, uh, a loop that goes back to the hidden state with a time delay, and the unraveled version, which essentially you can kind of think of as, an, as a multi-layer perceptron, where each, time, uh, which each, where each layer is a time step, and uh, the, the weights are tied U, V, and W between all the, uh, all the layers. Um, so that's how, uh, assuming that the, sequ the, the, the sequential data has some sort of uniformity, so the, 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 we share the parameters there. And the problem here um, is, uh, as with other neural networks, the more layers you have, uh, the, the harder it will become for the network to remember uh, information from the earlier on stages. And what that, and that, that has to do with the whole vanishing and exploding gradient uh, issues. Uh, so let's look a little bit more closely at, at how, what, how that unfolds in, in RNNs and how we can resolve it. So let's refresh our memories about exploding gradients when the outputs of activations get too big and they're past, then the gradient can get too large and then it goes to not a number in many compilers. And we saw previously that you set a threshold and then you clip the gradient to that threshold if it goes above the threshold mm -hmm. uh, for continuing the training. Now, what happens when you do that is you introduce a bias, but it keeps the process stable. The other situation is <clears throat> vanishing gradients. So one of the ways to uh, handle vanishing gradients is to initialize the weights properly close to the identity matrix. And the idea is that roughly everything will stay bounded between plus and minus one uh, so that as we go through, nothing gets too small. That doesn't always work because of the activation functions such as the damage or the sigmoid, so we use ReLU. Now, for ReLU, gradients don't vanish when it's positive, but zero mm -hmm. uh, when it's negative. That's why it's called rectified. Uh, so there are other tweaks to ReLU called leaky ReLU where you put a little bit of a negative mm -hmm. piece there so the gradients don't, the derivative doesn't vanish. And a smooth version of leaky ReLU is the exponential linear unit. So we have a number of tools to deal with the exploding gradient and the vanishing gradient. Um, and another trick that's worth mentioning when it comes to training RNNs, now that we, has, we have established that it's a, uh, it's a not a trivial job to train an RNN model, uh, the tri the, another trick is teacher forcing. So imagine, again going back to this, uh, this schematic here, imagine you have uh, a sequential uh, um, piece of data, input, output, and uh, what, what we have within the traditional form is you have a loop from the hidden state going back to itself. What happens is if you have many time steps, uh, the connection between the ultimate output and the hidden state in the earlier on starts to get lost. So a very simple trick that people do uh, to sort of uh, resolve this issue is replace this connection that goes from hidden state to hidden state, replace it by output to hidden state. So that way, the, out, the final output has some pathways, a skip connection to the hidden state of all the time steps, which will, in, 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 uh, in practice, it will uh, Im improve or help the training and the convergence of your neural network. So <coughs> somehow we have to um, remember better, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that means if we think of looking at a stage at time t, and say p stages before t minus p, that means we somehow have to remember this one by the time we get to this one. Mm -hmm. So we need to develop different architectures that'll help us remember 
to really obviate, to solve the problem of forgetting when we're too far away in the past. Mm -hmm. And one other interesting thing now that we're looking at skip connection and alternative pathways for information to flow, it's worth kind of reminding ourselves of the ResNet and how, uh, th how this can resolve issues in terms of CNNs as well. So it's always good to have those alternative pathways to make sure information can go back and forth if it's relevant to what the task we're trying to do. And I think if we think about our brains, there are probably examples mm -hmm. of how the short-term memory and the long-term memory interact. So maybe we can go back to neuroanatomy and even find newer ways to solve this memory problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah.